So Rika, I'm so glad to meet you in person finally. Thank, thank you, you for doing this. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your loyalty. Thank I really you like for that. Hosting. Oh yeah. Thank you're you. one of the ones that have reached out and says, I like what you're doing. Here's something I think you should know. I appreciate that. I welcome feedback. So people, feedback, feedback. She can attest to it. I listen. Yeah. So now though, you're here today, of course, to tell your her story. And um, one of the things that um, I noticed, um, and we sort of talked about it, was uh, people who are, what are they, the sandwich generation? Not people, women mainly. Because they're women, they're taking care of their aging parents, they're taking care of their husband, they're taking care of their at-home kids, and they have a job. Yes. How is anybody supposed to do that? That's a lot on a woman's plate. It is. And their health they should know it does come first so we want to help them put their health first so the first step is making an appointment with a doctor that they trust mm -hmm. and i do functional medicine which really gets to the root cause of a symptom for example fatigue and i also help to balance hormones so the first step is making that appointment okay Okay. And then in that appointment, I'm with you for an hour, and we go through your history, what, what is your health goals, and how can we get you there? So in the plan, the first thing is the food that they're eating. So I help to optimize that, because we know that certain food promotes health, and there are certain foods that promote disease. Mm -hmm. So there's so a lot of things, other things too that, and I'm gonna say women, because that's who we're talking to, that they go through. Because um, there's even more stress in the fact that with all that you just mentioned and all that they're doing, they never seem to put themselves first. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking like, what, what would be the advice for that? You, you have to put yourself first. You're right. You put yourself first because if you're your healthiest, you're going to be healthy for your family. And then what you learn, it's going to transfer to your kids. Your kids are going to see that you're eating healthy and then mm -hmm. they'll be healthy. That's true. It's interesting you say that too because we spoke with another woman earlier and she did uh, a wellness with food for her family. And she says now her daughter is doing it on Instagram which is really nice. And her friends, friends of the kids, they all know it because they come over, they have a brownie, but it's got something else in it besides just chocolate and things like that. Definitely. Yeah, yes. okay, okay. Vegetables is a yeah. huge thing. Like women, we need to up our vegetable intake. We need a pound a day of vegetables. Mm -hmm. And it's the rainbow, we have to make it fun. That's all, oh, oh, that's what I said. I, cause I post my food and I say, look at my food, it's so colorful. I call this food integration. Look at, look at how well they all get along together. It's delicious, yeah, so no, So absolutely. all a variety of phytonutrients, yes. antioxidants, mm -hmm. and that's what's really going to decrease inflammation, so mm -hmm. decrease disease. So it, it, explain so exactly what you, you based all this on and how you see this happening, that you can change people's lives with. So functional can, medicine, it's evidence-based yeah. medicine. It is uh, all from research. Mm -hmm. And we first we focus on like healing the gut because most disease starts in the gut. Mm -hmm. And the first step to healing the gut is to eat the right foods. And the second is to remove agents or inflammatory triggers from your food. So inflammatory items are sugar, gluten, uh, dairy products can be inflammatory. And inflammation then can promote autoimmune disease. And we know like in women, autoimmune disease is more in women compared to men. And so by using the right food, we're gonna mm -hmm. be able to decrease autoimmune disease too. Mm -hmm. Wow. What other challenges do you think that women have, and we just mentioned just a couple of them, that they can use this sort of therapy with the food and the way they eat, this functional medicine? So we use it also for hormone balancing. Yes. No shots, no, no pills. No, well, no pills, no, pills. Uh, no drugs, let's yeah, say, okay, let's let's say, say that. that. Okay. Yeah, no synthetic hormones. Mm -hmm. So to balance out hormones, uh, we talk about like the symptoms that they're having. So it could be PMS symptoms, it could be heavy periods. So one of the greatest foods to help with hormone balancing are the cruciferous foods. So cooked 
kale and Brussels sprouts and cauliflower. Very good yes. for estrogen balancing. Wow, that is good to know. You know, and I notice, I do those, those are my favorite things, everything you mentioned, and I do notice now that a lot of restaurants are doing things with Brussels sprouts and cauliflower. You're right. Yeah, so somebody sent them the memo. This is great. Now, is it all food? Because I'm, I, I'm not seeing, hearing you say anything about, you know, activity or whatever, so. Yeah, so we definitely talk about stress management. Okay. So exercise follows into that category. Mm -hmm. Women love to exercise for stress management. So yoga is so, so good. And there's so much research on yoga and yeah. breathing exercises. I mean, when you're in your car commuting, that's when you can also focus on breathing for stress management. Wow. Sometimes you're in that car stuck in the Ted Williams tunnel. You need some breathing management. And so an easy one is the five, five, five. So you What's inhale that? for a count of five, you hold it for five, and then you exhale for a count of five. Interesting. All right, I'm Super gonna easy, right? That. Yeah, that is five, five, five. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now tell me what um, you've been doing this for how long? A decade now. Wow, good for you. So what got you into this? Oh, good question. Mm -hmm. So I am trained in internal medicine, so conventionally trained, and that's a three-year residency after medical school. Mm -hmm. And 80% of that training is working in a hospital setting. So after I graduated, I joined a hospital and I was treating the, the strokes and treating the heart attacks and treating diabetes complications and even congestive heart failure. So we would use the drugs to get them out of the acute acute situation mm -hmm. and then we would discharge them back home and they would follow up with their primary care doctor and then they would come back like in three months with the same thing like the diabetes out of control back in congestive heart failure so I knew there was a piece that was missing mm -hmm. in the prevention from their doctors yeah and they were not getting the prevention and like what foods they, they can be eating to really decrease their diabetes complications. And so I met my now husband and he was in the world of functional medicine. And so I started going to conferences and I met other medical doctors all across the country using food as medicine and let's get to the root cause and let's do this kind of uh, testing in the lab work to see what nutrients are deficient in people. Mm -hmm. So we live in New England, vitamin D deficiency is so prominent here. There was a study that was done that shows that we don't get enough vitamin D from November until March. Oh yeah. Right? It's no sunlight. And yeah. vitamin D deficiency is associated with autoimmune disease, inflammatory bowel disease, cancer, fatigue, hormone imbalance. Vitamin D is huge. Wow. Now do when you did this, because it sounds, and I don't know, non-traditional, did you get a lot of resistance from people that are saying, no, we're gonna? Yes, so when I was working in the hospital, I was talking to my colleagues about, like, we should be checking vitamin D levels on our patients. Mm -hmm. And they're like, there is no research, but the research actually is there. It's all on PubMed. Oh my The gosh. research is there, so. Yes. Wow. So was it quite a challenge for you to get up and? It was a challenge in the beginning, but then you surround yourself with like-minded doctors mm -hmm. and it is growing. This field is definitely growing. Patients want to know the root cause of their condition. They don't want to be given a medication anymore because they know medications have side effects. Right, yeah. And they want to use their lifestyle and stress management. They mm -hmm. want to know more tools on this. What, um, so what, if anything, would make people, how would people realize it's like, you know what, maybe there's somebody else I can go and see. What else can I do besides this? Because I'm going to this doctor and these drugs and this medication is not helping. So they can visit ifm.org, which stands for the Institute for Functional Medicine, okay. and they type in their zip code under find a practitioner, and the the doctors that have gone through that training will pop up and 
they make that phone call. Okay, yeah, and I guess it's anything that, you know, they feel that's not right, that then they could just make a call if they wanted to at least check out an alternative. Right, and if they're in the Boston area, they can visit ohmhealingcenter.com. Ta-da, we will have that on the <laughs> We will have that posted for you, absolutely. Yeah, um, what, is there anything else that you, you want to say as a takeaway for the, the people that are going to be watching this video and, and hearing it from you? It's a good question. So listen to your gut. If your gut is telling you there's something else that's missing from the plan from your doctor, listen to it and know that there is definitely a natural way to help your symptoms and reverse disease. That's like literally and figuratively listen to your gut. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. I really appreciate you doing this. Anytime. All right.